All right, in this question, we are asked to find how long it's going to take a stone to hit the ground. So we have a function here, and it's so throw, stone is thrown downward. So I, I must be at a cliff or something. And I'm up here, I throw a stone downward. And it looks like this path is a parabolic one that's defined by that function. Um, initial velocity, all of that stuff would be involved in the formula. Um, then they say from a height of 294, so I'm sitting 294 meters up, how long will it take the stone to hit the ground? So S of T, that there is the distance. So T stands for time. They say that in there, T stands for time. And S of T would be the distance after a certain length of time. So I'm wanting to know how long how long it takes for the thing to hit the ground if I'm throwing it from 294 feet. So this has to be my distance. I'm plugging that in there. So I'll have 294 is equal to 4.9t squared plus 34.3t. It's a quadratic, so I'm going to bring everything over to one side and make it equal to 0, 34.3t minus 294. So it's a quadratic, so at this point I try and factor it. The number out front doesn't look that good. Um, I could use a quadratic formula, or I could, if I'm lucky, uh, be able to divide um, all these terms by a certain number. I'm just going to take that, take a shot at that. So I'm going to divide this and this and this all by 4.9 and see if it comes out even. <laughs> Uh, hopefully. So 4.9 divided by 4.9 would just be t squared plus okay, 34.3 divide 4.9. Whoops. Uh, delete. Ah. Oh, my calculator's going funny. 34.3 divide 4.9. Oh, it comes out to 7. Nice. Minus 294 divide 4.9, 60. So uh, now it's a quadratic, so I can try and factor it. Well, it, it was a quadratic before, but now I've got a 1 there in front of the t, so I can try and factor it. So t and t, things that multiply to 60, 12, and 5, maybe? Yeah, that multiplies to 60. Maybe positive 12, negative 5. Positive 12, negative 5. So now um, uh, the zero principle, something times something is zero. So t plus 12 is zero. Or t minus 5 is zero. So here t equals minus 12. Or t equals positive 5. So a negative time doesn't make sense. And that would be if this parabola was extended over this way. That would be whatever the time was at that side, but that part doesn't make sense because I've got the stone up there. So this part here makes sense. So the time, how long will it take the stone to hit the, hit the ground? Five seconds. Okay, hopefully that helps you with that question. Okay, in this question, we are asked to graph this function. So um, maybe I'll just, let me just grab up a, a graph here. Okay, so I have to graph that thing on a on a graph paper somewhere. So what I need to know is figure out uh, x-intercepts and I need to know sort of how the graph looks. So uh, a couple things I can see right from this function here. The first one is what the y-intercept is. So the y-intercept is negative 8, so down here negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, that's where the graph is going to cross the y-axis, y-axis. Now I want to figure out what the x-intercepts are. And maybe just before I do that, the other thing that this function tells me is this first leading term, it's the one with the highest degree, tells me the shape of the graph. So if it's cubic, that tells me the graph looks either like this or like that. And to tell which of those it is, it's the sign in front here. So if it's a negative cubic, it looks like this graph. So I need to have that kind of shape on this graph here. Now, so far, with just the y-intercept, I can't, uh, can't really do anything. So I need to find x-intercepts. 
in Math 92, all we, the only functions we'll give you are ones that are factorable. Uh, and so when I take a look at this one, um, I'm hoping I can factor that. Since it's a cubic, I can't just go right into these. I would do that if it was a, a squared, a quadratic graph. So I can't do that. But I am wanting in the end to come up, since it's a cubic, with three brackets. So that's, that's where I'm heading, hopefully, at the end. Uh, let me erase some of this stuff. So, in order to factor this one, um, uh, and in Math 95, we show you how you can use synthetic division to factor this, but in Math 92, all the ones we'll give you will be ones where you could, they're already factored, or you can use group factoring to solve. So, in this first one, I'm going to um, group factor, so I'm going to take out a common factor. So, it'll be um, negative x squared is what I'll take out. And that'll leave me with a positive x minus 2. Careful with the signs. Out of the second one, I can take out a positive 4. Make sure you're writing that sign in. And that leaves me with an x minus 2. So, if here I have a term and here I have a term, what's common is an x minus 2. So, I can factor the x minus 2 out. And that leaves me with uh, negative x squared plus 4. Ooh, I don't like that that much. Uh, this is a good one to look at, though. So, um, I want I want to make that a difference of squares, but right as it sits, I, I can't do it. But if I were to factor negative 1 out of that, I'd be left with x squared minus 4. Then I could do a difference of squares with that. So, uh, keeping going here, I have a negative 1. And then this is a difference of squares, so it would be x minus 2, x plus 2. And in the end, I'd probably put that minus 1 out front, and then I'd have x minus 2, oh, there's two of them, so that's squared, and an x plus 2. Now, if I want to find the zeros, then I'm going to make g of x is equal to 0. Then I can use a 0 property to solve this. So either x minus 2 is 0, or x minus 2 is 0. I just did one for each of those or x plus 2 is equal to 0. You might find it funny that I do two of those, but if there's a multiplicity of 2, it means something on the graph. So that's why I'm doing two of them. So for this one, I get x equals 2, this one x equals 2, this one x equals a negative 2. So I have 2 with a multiplicity of 2. So an x-intercept of 2, and something funky happens there. The book doesn't show you to put a circle there, but I just do that just to remind myself that something happens there. And I have another x-intercept of minus 2. So now I should be able to apply this graph, or that shape, to this graph. So it should look, I have to start from the top left. So I'm coming down. I can only cross the x-axis at those points I've given. So I come down. And I'll probably come down, and sometimes you, you, that's the bottom point, that y-intercept. And I'm thinking it's the bottom point just because it's 2 to the left and 2 to the right are your x-intercepts, but it could be out a little bit. So I come up, now I'm coming up to this point here, and when I have a multiplicity of 2, that's where it just comes and touches the graph and bounces back the other way. So I'm going to come up and touch that and bounce back the other way and keep going down. So that would be my cubic graph. So a couple key things, y-intercept, figure out what that is, figure out what the direction, what shape the graph is going to be. So in the book, I think they call that a, um, a high to low graph. And then once I find out my x-intercepts, if there are any multiplicities, make sure that I uh, identify where those are and what's going to happen. So even multiplicities, they just touch and go back the other way, or they bounce. If you have an odd multiplicity, so say if that was an odd multiplicity where I had uh, three twos, then what happens at that point is rather than bounce and come back, it just does sort of a bend at that point. All right, hopefully that helps you with graphing.